Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Latif, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, and this is episode 58. Yes. Um, Everything is cool. It's a good day today. Pretty busy. Um, As you guys know, anyone who's been following, we are packing up tonight uh, because we are out of here tomorrow morning. Uh, Get to the airport. We have the two shows this weekend. Um, Don't forget, all my Texas people, please Come down. I really want to meet you guys. Uh, I know. So, listen, I've been going to Texas for so many years. So, all parts of Texas, man. I I don't think there's any part that I I haven't been to yet. In fact, you want to hear something crazy, right? So, my first show with Lil Susie was, uh, let me think. Let me think for a second. So, yeah. So, I think it was 25 years ago. So, my first professional outing with Lil Susie. Now, remember, I worked with her since she was five years old. But I'm talking about once I hit the road with her um, about 25 years ago. And my absolute first place, the first place that I flew to with her was Dallas, Texas. Okay? And I had never been to Dallas. And I remember... Never been. I, I didn't go anywhere, really. I mean, the only place that I ever used to go to was Florida. That was about it. Uh, I've been to Puerto Rico, but this is just like vacation with the family. Um, but this was the first time you know I got on the road, and I remember going a long time before I ever even made it to California, to the point where I was saying, uh, "Man, you know, the only place I've never been to yet was California." Then it was like from one day to the next. I ended up going to California. The first place in California that I started going to was the Bay Area. It was actually San Jose, California. And I got to meet a lot of people there. And we used to do San Francisco. And then I remember years and years went by and I never went to L.A. I'm like, uh, Susie didn't really have much of a market in L.A. But then when I got with Angel, Angel was huge in L.A. And once I got with her, boom, the doors opened up. That's when I created SAL. See, SAL gave me the opportunity to bring Susie into L.A. and Angel into the Bay Area. So that's how that worked out. You know, Lizette was in the middle. Uh, and it was just a cool bridge. Um, but Texas, uh, man, Houston, Austin, San Antonio, Corpus, uh, Waco, uh, El Paso, I mean, McAllen, McAllen, I remember being beautiful. I think I've only been there like twice. I remember being like Mexico, I think because it's like right next to Mexico. Um, But Texas was always, always very, very supportive. We used to do um, the shows in Dallas at KNON, uh, Dave Chaos. I mean, I knew the whole crew that was there. um, And uh, they used to bring us down and we used to do the Energy Fest or we used to do a lot of the, the concerts with Big D and Alan Hammer. We even go back to Jim Evans. So any of my Dallas people, you remember Jim Evans, okay? Jim Evans, okay. So now it's kind of foggy. Um, he passed away, by the way. Um, he was one of the first, he was still probably one of the first people that I was I would, I connected with uh, when I first started uh, going on the road, you know? And... Um, and uh, he, um, and he was really cool, white dude. Uh, I remember him having a, I believe it was a toupee or a wig or something, you know. Uh, but he was really, really nice guy, very energetic, and um, and and it was cool. But Dallas, man, we used to go out there so much, man, that we, you know, we we didn't do another video. But no, before we did the next video, I think the next video was uh, when I fall in love. Um, or turn the beat around, I forgot. But I remember telling them, man, we should film it in Dallas because she's got such a huge fan base, you know? Now, we used to go to San Antonio because we used to do stuff with KTFM for the station. Um, And then I used to go to Austin 
Austin, we didn't go that much, but we went. And I don't know if any of you guys from the Austin area remember Martin. Martin's another guy, man, that used to bring us down a lot. He was a DJ. He, too, he passed away. Um, in Dallas, also, another dude that passed away was Simon Diamond. Anybody from Dallas definitely knows Simon Diamond. So, you know, I got a chance, uh, the opportunity, you know, the privilege to meet some really, really, really great people on the road. And, you know, I think my entire career, if people say, well, what's the one thing that you're grateful for being on the road, you know, with, with my career? And I, I think it was meeting new people. I have to say, I could, I could think of other things, but meeting new people, it wasn't meeting the artists, they were, listen, artists are mad cool, no issues, but it was meeting the people, the fans, who many of them became friends. If you look at any of the people I interact with online that are fans of ours or fans of me, not fans, but are friends of me in particular, uh, I met them on the road and I have them all over the country. And, uh, and think about it, you know, had I not had this career, I mean, my friends would be pretty, I probably wouldn't have any friends, to be honest. Um, because when I was younger, I had all my friends, right? All the way into my teens. The problem is my friends were up, like me, were up to no good. So we were all up to no good. Um, so when I came home, you know, I went away. I did a few years. When I came home, I didn't want to hang out with those friends anymore. So those friends I knew at that point were not good for me. So I stayed away from them. Uh, and so I ended up pretty much, you know, and I'm talking about living in New York. I ended up uh, not really hanging out with anybody. I didn't have anybody. Anybody that I ended up hanging out with or whatever were in the business one way or the other. They were either producers or uh, not really artists. You know, the, my closest, closest friend as an artist, of course, is little Susie. That's, you know, and, and not just as an artist. She's like top, top, tip, tippity top of the list of my best friends in the whole wide world, you know, and her and her parents as well. You know, I started out friends with her parents, uh, her father in particular. Um, I, we worked together uh, at 520 Madison Avenue in Manhattan. I was maintenance. He was an engineer. Um, and that was during my crazy days, you know, and, um, I, you know, I mentioned the story of how we, uh, how we hooked up and, um, and he's always had a lot of trust, a lot of faith in me and I've never betrayed him. I would never, you know, they, I hold them very high. Actually, if you read my books, you know, I give them props and, uh, a couple of them actually feast styles. Basically I dedicate it to them, to the Casals, you know, they mean that much to me. I, I, I love them a lot. They're very special people to me. Um, nobody could ever say anything about them without me uh, coming to the defense, you know? And, th and I know they, they feel the same way. So, But we've had a, a, a great friendship and a great working relationship. And um, But I got friends pretty much all over the country, you know, that I've met. Um, some of them, you know, I have a few that are not friends anymore. Not that we're not enemies. Just kind of went off into other areas. Um, and that's cool, but I got to meet these people and um, in the early, let me see, the mid to late 90s, I was doing a lot of the Winter Music Conference. And it was really cool because everywhere I went around the country, uh, this is when I had the Style and Free label. Ho hold on one second, guys. My dog is making too much noise over here. Hey, stop it. <laughs> Sorry, guys. He's over here, she's over here snoring. I'm like, no, you drive me crazy right now. But um, uh, yeah, during the like the mid, mid to late 90s, I was doing a lot of the Winter Music Conference in Miami. And what, this was what was so cool about it is I had the Style and Free label at that point, okay? And I'll tell you one thing, I was broke as shit, man. I was broke. <laughs> I used to go, my crew was rolling a lot deeper than I was. I was not. Um, but they, I created this, uh, I created this company. I basically bootstrapped it. You know, for those who don't know, it was basically on, I, I worked it with however I can make that money. 
However, I can, whatever I needed to do to get the money to press CDs. My mother helped me at one point and I would go, I remember right now, honestly, I probably don't go anywhere and not, not that I'm living large and not like, but I like to have cash on my army. I always have my cards, but there's something about having cash in my wallet. Sometimes I don't even touch the cash, but sometimes like 300 bucks, you know, that's comfortable for me. If I'm going on the road, if I'm going to the store, I'm in the neighborhood, you know, whatever, you know, 40 bucks, I don't care. But if I'm going to hit the road, I like to have at least 300 bucks in cash on my pocket, in my pocket, just in case you never know, you lose your card, whatever the case may be, um, that will less, at least, you know, you know, you have a little cash on you. Um, but I remember going to Florida to the winter music conference. Okay. So now I registered, I remember, I think the first time I couldn't even afford the actual registration. It was cheap at that time. I think, ah, it was like 400 bucks. I really don't remember, but I don't remember being that expensive because if it was any more than that, I would not be able to afford it. But I remember going a couple, once, I think only once I went and I didn't register we just hung out by the pool. And what we did was a big networking party. So I'm seeing all these people that, first of all, I'm seeing producers that I knew and, and artists that I knew by my association with Susie. That's it. I wasn't an agent. I wasn't operating as an agent yet. Um, or I was, but I, you know, the name wasn't there. I was still, I was still grinding. Um, and it was really cool to be able to walk down around the pool and not the fact of me seeing people, but the people that knew me. And that was mad, mad cool. And I loved that, you know, I could walk around the pool and it's like Latif, Latif, Latif. And I used to love that. And then as, as the more years go, go by, you know, I went on, I started meeting more people, more celebrities and, you know, um, I started, you know, seeing people that I, I admired and I, I, I I, I grew up listening to whether they were artists or producers, you know, um, and I did that for several years. And the Style of Free organization, like I said, we bootstrapped it, man. I mean, we were like a super duper ghetto, you know. I was just doing freestyle compilations. I only did two, but my marketing skills back then, and this is before social media, I got to give myself props. For some way, somehow, I knew what the hell I was doing. You know, I was out there. I remember back in the days, we were like the first one. The Style and Free Records had its first um, website in like, I don't know. It was before my first album. So my first album came out in 96. So it has to be about 95, 94. Okay. And you probably don't remember too many people that had a website back in those days. I didn't even know what the hell. I was paying for this thing. I didn't even know what it did. And then I remember I used to get uh, Damien Wilde, who was on my, my uh, compilation, my first compilation. Um, he used to do, we used to do, um, uh, he used to come to the house and we used to do uh, a newsletter called um, the Style and Free Network News. And it was cool because, <clears throat> and it's so funny because I found some. I need to scan them and put them out there. It was really, really cool. Um, I had a thing in there called Word for Light, a Word by Latif. A word by a word by Latif, yeah, a word by Latif, and it was basically like a motivational page. Um, I had ads in there, even though I didn't sell them, I gave them away for free. Um, we had this thing called Dia Delfina. Damon also helped me with that as well. <coughs> My mother's name was Delfina. My mother used to write when she was in school. She had like a little newspaper called Ding Dong Dell. And I remember her telling me. So I remember giving her a shot to write for the paper. I'm sorry, I love my mother. I miss her. But it's kind of corny. <laughs> <laughs> it just wasn't, I couldn't do it, you know, my mom was older than me, and it's just the, the jokes wasn't, they weren't resonating, I was, I was younger at that time, I was early 20s, so it just wasn't vibing, so anyway, but I wanted to honor her with the name, so Damien ended up becoming Delfina, and he wrote like he was this big fat black lady, big fat black woman, he just had this, you know, and it, yo, he was so funny, man, he rocked it, and I have some of these <coughs> I, I just actually found some. Uh, and then what I used to do is fold them a certain way. And I had this entire like assembly line of just me. And I used to sit there. I used to pop stamps on them, fold them. I, I learned how to do labels. I used to do the labels. I think in the beginning, I used to just write them in. Then I learned how to type labels. And I used to mail them. And I used to even put my family on them. I used to pay to put my family on them. Because I just want people to read them. And I have people that collected them and... Until this day, people talk about it. 
And it was like really, really bootleg ghetto kind of, but you know what? I, I, when I look at it now, it was pretty much, it was pretty, pretty up to par. I mean, the ideas were there. And what was happening, and I didn't realize this, is I was becoming popular because of it. People started to know who I was. They even, I think it was Dance Music Authority, even gave me an opportunity to do a word for Latif in their magazine. I declined. I forgot why. I just wasn't really wasn't interested. Um, we used to do reviews. We used to do artist spotlights, and man, it was really really cool. I mean, we said I think if I remember correctly, man, I think we used to even do like cut and paste stuff, like literally like cut something out, put it, paste it, Xerox copy. I forgot how we used to do it. That's another thing. I remember taking these things. I don't remember sitting down printing these things. I remember going to um, like a Kinko's. I think it was like when Kinko's first opened up. And I remember going there with these and making them all, popping the stamps. And then and then I would get the returns. And it's so funny because they were, I wouldn't throw them out. <laughs> <laughs> they would come in like the wrong address or whatever. I would just keep them. You like I just I just didn't want to get rid of any of them. Um, but but it really really helped me um, get to get really get people to who, familiar with me. Then we used to go to the Winter Music Conference, and this is what was so funny. So I used to go out there. I swear to God, like maybe for a whole week, like three hundred dollars, right? So what was so crazy? Now I'm not a drinker. But now I'm hanging with the guys, you know, I used to have a little drink, but I could only really afford the beer. But you see, I set myself up to basically be the head honcho of the, of the, of the group, you know? So what used to happen is people used to buy me drinks, <laughs> you know? And it wasn't bad because, you know, like I said, I didn't drink. So I could drink one beer and that should last me the whole night. Um, and then people would also treat me for food. What I did do is I did pay for my room. Now, I never slept in a room by myself, though. I remember one of the first few times, uh, it was a whole, we, we got a van, and it was like a whole bunch of us, and that's when I did the Style of Free, and we had, man, we had, that's when a uh, new image, and we had everybody from the Freestyle, the first uh, Style of Free compilation, the Alternative Dance, we had several people from that compilation that went, and let me tell you something, man, it's probably the funnest times I've ever had and I slept on floors or I, I slept on the bed and uh, oh man we had so much and I, I remember <laughs> I remember you know um, um, totally like we had what five days by day two I was broke <laughs> so you know but um, and I always knew who to hang out with. I always had my main dude. It was usually Ray Soto, man. Ray rolled with me for ver for a long time. Ray always had the good job, so Ray got paid, man. He's the one that had the house already, and he already had the car, and he was already he was doing well. He had a really good job, so that was my partner. <laughs> so and it was cool. I made him I made him like my right hand man. But it was it was fun, man. I didn't take advantage of these guys, please. Don't don't uh, don't take it the wrong way. We just had a good time. I was just broke. I was broke as shit, man. Uh, but I rode through there. Let me tell you something. I remember DMA uh, magazine doing a write up about the Style and Free crew. There was one time we had 27 people that were a part part of us. 27 people. They did a write up and they said it in the magazine. I know. I have that magazine somewhere, and it said. Um, uh, spotted throughout the conference, um, style of free, style of free records re representing to the fullest uh, with this huge staff of people that came to support. And man, uh, man, it was a really, really cool write up. Now, years later, I ended up investing. It was crazy. It was my highest priced investment. And I invested in a full page ad that promoted my compilation. I swear, I hope I hope to God I can find these things, man. I know I have them. I really hope I can find them because I'm thinking about this now. I'm like, wow, wow. I think I paid like $800 for it, for one page, for one month. Now, it wasn't to sell records. It was to get the name out there. I just wanted to be a starer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just wanted people... 
I knew if I could get people to acknowledge who I am, that it would open up some more doors. Now, I already had a good in, you know, the style of free thing got me, had me really situ situated. As I worked more with Susie and people started putting us together more, and then later on when it was just me and her on the road, and I was basically running the show, um, then things really, really started to open up. And then when it got to a point where, you know, like I got to with Angel, and things opened up even more. Like, so things just kept on, kept on working. But before that, you know, as an agent, I, I think being an agent with Law Entertainment, I think that kicked open the doors uh, more than anything, I think. Because think about it, I'm, I'm making these promoters, these artists money. I make them easily 10%. That means I'm giving them 90%. Some of my 1099s used to go out with like 60,000, 90,000. So if, you, if I'm giving you a 1099 for 60,000, what that is, I'm only taxing you on the deposit. The deposit is 50% minus my 10% commission. So think about that. So if it was 60,000, then there's a good chance that it was probably like 150,000 in total okay and then you minus my commission from the from the gross and then the only amount of money that I physically got hold of was the deposit and that's what I would um, uh, 1099 uh, the artist with so some of these were pretty significant I had 60,000 90,000 19,000 12 man I think about it now man some of the top names that you can you can think of and this is what's crazy a lot of them weren't getting the money they're getting now. A lot of them, they were only getting like, really, like I would have to say, I'm thinking about who's out there. Yeah, about half. So an artist that's now getting about four grand was only getting like two, you know? Some artists really, really escalated. You know, the Stevie B's and the Lisa's. You know, I used to, I used to book them at a time at, from pretty, pretty um, uh, conservative numbers. Pretty conservative, very conservative, in fact. <laughs> you know, very few people will remember them going out at the, on those numbers. But this is when the, when the market was basically, it was kind of flimsy, man. It wasn't really much happening. I, and I breathed a lot of life. I, I ended up, you know, I mentioned this to you guys before. Um, I mentioned to you guys before and uh, um, uh, that, uh, uh, what you call it? I'm sorry, somebody just texted me. It's my sister. Um, but anyway, listen, let me, let me not, I gotta, I gotta, I'm gonna have to get off of this, man, because I think this is important. But listen, guys, I, I'll pick this up at another point. Uh, I appreciate you guys chilling out with me. We'll pick this up. Uh, tomorrow, when I, um, when I podcast with you guys, I will, um, be doing it from Houston, Texas. Okay. So be on the lookout, tune in, and please share, please like, uh, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. And I'll talk to you guys uh, tomorrow. So until then, good night, freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.